room, and we are in light today with a sound system. So yeah. luckily yeah. everyone here. Yeah. So thank everybody. Thank everybody for coming today. My name is Renee Vogelsang. I'm speaking on behalf of New Yorkers Against Fracking. We're a coalition of more than 230 organizations, over 1,000 businesses, and hundreds of faith-based leaders calling for a statewide ban on hydraulic fracturing in New York State. We are here today for the public hearing on liquefied natural gas facilities in New York State. We're here to fill the hearing room, and I can say that we are definitely going to be filling the hearing room today. This is just the beginning, and we're going to keep organizing and getting the word out on these facilities and their implications in New York. We're also here today to demand that Governor Cuomo and the Department of Environmental Conservation withdraw the proposed liquefied natural gas regulations. Yeah. Yeah. The proposed regulations go well beyond the stated intent to allow for vehicle fueling stations. Instead, they are designed for the oil and gas industry to build out infrastructure for fracking across the state. Worse still, the regulations are woefully inadequate and put the health and well-being of New Yorkers at risk. As a little background, New York State put a moratorium on liquefied natural gas fueling stations in the 1970s after a horrible explosion at a liquefied natural gas facility in Staten Island killed 40 workers in 1973. In that instance, a liquefied natural gas tank blew up. The scale of the explosion was horrific. A firefighter at the scene reported that it was, quote, like a science fiction novel or Dante's Inferno. Now, Governor Cuomo and the DEC have proposed new regulations for liquefied natural gas storage and transport with the stated intent to allow for small vehicle fueling stations. However, the regulations go far beyond the stated intent, offering no size limitations, no siting restrictions on unlimited transport, and permitting construction of conversion plants and export terminals. These regulations are currently designed to allow for the unfettered transport and export to foreign markets of gas that is fracked in New York. Governor Cuomo and the DEC have failed to look at the associated environmental and public health impacts. The egregious nature of the regulations demonstrate why an environmental impact assessment and public health assessment are absolutely necessary. Yes. 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 Additionally, Governor Cuomo and the DEC have kept the Department of Transportation out of this process which is dangerous and unacceptable considering the nature of this proposed expansion. It is also in violation of state law. It has become apparent that the DEC is attempting to pass rules that would support fracking in New York under the guise of a less blatant heading. heading. It behooves all New Yorkers to be wary of the lie being told and investigate what these regulations would really allow the gas industry to do. For these reasons and many more that our next speakers will discuss, we demand that Governor Cuomo and the DEC withdraw these fatally flawed regulations and start over with a new rulemaking process that meets the stated intent of allowing natural gas fueling stations only. We are delivering a letter today to the DEC and Governor Cuomo that goes through these demands. A copy is included with your press release today. With that, I'm pleased to introduce Russ Haven. He is a legislative counsel with the New York Public Interest Research Group. Yeah. 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 Um, um, it's um, 40 years in the making for these. 40 years in the making for the proposed regulations, and the DEC offers up something half baked. Um, frankly, we were we were shocked. Uh, to see the draft regulations. Um, uh, first of all, the proposal would allow liquefied natural gas facilities of any size. Despite saying this is all about small-scale clean vehicle refueling, 
uh, we could have enormous storage facilities in New York State under this proposal. We we're also shocked to see there's no real uh, expanded safety zone between LNG facilities and residential areas, schools and daycare centers, or places of worship. Instead of the maximum safety proposal that the legislature directed DEC to produce, this is a minimal approach to public safety. And then, and then to make matters worse, DEC is offering up a legal loophole to exempt the state Department of Transportation from having a hands-on role in ensuring road safety to deal with the increase in LNG tanker truck traffic that would happen if this proposal becomes uh, the rule in New York State. Uh, also surprising, DEC only offered up one recent study to support its proposal, but that, that report was from a blatantly conflicted consulting firm uh, the firm, in fact, holds patents and is marketing a process uh, for fracking and also for mobile LNG production facilities, which, by the way, appear to be exempted from direct regulation by DEC. So you have a conflicted consultant boosting DEC and avoiding regulation directly by the agency. Um, we think overall, this, you know, based on what the industry is saying when you review their materials uh, and, and their supporters' materials, this, uh, the DEC's LNG proposal looks more like a Trojan horse. It comes proposed as a clean car and, and truck uh, proposal, but when it opens up, there's LNG production facilities across the state, and potentially a superstructure is in place for fracking uh, for New York or to augment what's happening in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a deeply fraud proposal, and they've got to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Yeah. Our next speaker is Keith Shu. He's an engineer with expertise in policy and regulatory reviews uh, from Cherry Valley, New York. Here, keep your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's, it's great to be here. When you look at uh, the Sorry, when you read DEC's press release, when you talk to their staff on the phone, or you read what Commissioner Joe Martin says in the newspaper, you'll hear a lot about gas stations being truck stops for vehicles that run on liquefied natural gas, LNG. And so you might think, well, okay, that's not so bad. What's the big deal? That kind of sounds like small potatoes. However, when you actually read DEC's regulatory impact statement, the big picture, and I mean the very big picture, becomes much more clear. According from DEC's impact statement, the type of facilities that we could see here in New York State if these rules are adopted include not just gas stations. They also include LNG export and import terminals, plants that produce, store, and vaporize LNG, regional LNG production facilities, big ones, LNG facilities that are attached to gas pipelines, LNG facilities at gas wells. Yes, gas wells, you know, fracking. The fact the fact is that DEC's regs support a virtual smorgasbord of fracking and natural gas infrastructure. The rules contain no limit whatsoever on how big these facilities could become. And like Russ just mentioned, we now know that the author of the 2011 report which DEC is using to justify these regs is Expansion Energy, a company with not only a vested interest in LNG, but a very specific interest in promoting its own patented technology for mobile LNG facilities that would be located at gas well pads where fracking occurs. Can you say conflict of interest? It sounds like a conflict of interest to me. Conflict of interest! Nothing unusual about it. So now that we know that DEC is ready to invite any type of LNG facility under the sun into our state, the obvious question has to be, how's agency, how's agency going to deal with that? How are they going to regulate this industry? Well, the answer, folks, basically is they aren't. Okay, these are the regs right here. I can hold them in my little pinky finger. <laughs> it's about nine pages long. There's a definition section up front. There's some references at the end, but there's not much in between. There is no solid siting criteria for the location or size of facilities necessary to protect people living nearby. You know, folks who may be impacted by an explosion or an, or a, or a flammable vapor cloud that's wafting from a ruptured tank. 
There's no avoidance or mitigation requirements here to protect natural resources. There's nothing here about greenhouse gas emissions. Governor Cuomo said that's important to him. There's nothing here about that. There's nothing about operator qualifications. There's hardly even anything here about reporting accidents or carrying insurance to cover those accidents. You will basically find one thing when you read these rules. A reference to industry fire codes. That's right, industry, industry fire codes. The things that are required to happen anyway. That's about it. These regs don't say anything new. They do, however, if adopted, unleash a whole new wave of infrastructure for frack gas upon New York State. So we are here today to send a clear message to DEC and Governor Cuomo. This will not stand. No! Yes! This is not responsive to DEC's obligation pursuant to the Environmental Conservation Law, Article 23, Title 17. No. No. This is not responsive to DEC's broader mandate as an agency charged with protecting the environment and the people of New York. No. And this is certainly not how we pay respect to the 40 men who lost their lives in an industrial explosion at an LNG plant in Staten Island back in 1973. Yeah. Right. Right. The only responsible course of action now is for DC to withdraw these regs and to start over. Yeah. DC has tried to make us believe that these rules are intended just to give trucks that run on LNG a way of filling up when they pass through New York State. So, so if that is the case, if that is truly the case, DC, if this is really not about massive storage facilities or terminals or peak plants hanging off of gas pipelines, if this is not about expansion energies planned for LNG at fracking wells across the southern tier, if it's not about those things, then DC should not adopt rules that will let those type of things occur. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Sandra Steingraber, internationally acclaimed author, biologist and ecologist, and member of Concerned Health Professionals of New York. Thank you, Renee. When policy statutes are passed by legislators and regulations are crafted to make the law enforceable, that's a good thing, and that's what brings us here. Rulemaking is a time to take a close look at the science behind both the law and the proposed regulations that bring the law to life. Those of us who work in the field of health and environmental science are in an unusual position today because the proposed draft regulations on liquefied natural gas facilities are based on no science at all. Let me say that again. There are no scientific studies referenced in these regulations. The regs contain no data. <laughs> what makes this fact particularly shocking is that the law behind the regs was written in the bicentennial year of 1976, 37 years ago. I did not even possess a driver's license in 1976, and I am 54 years old. In 1976, we knew nothing about climate change. Gasoline still contained lead. You could smoke on airplanes, and dilution was wrongly thought to be the solution to pollution. Our understanding of health and environmental science has evolved a lot since 1976. Yes. So you might imagine that in the unusual situation where an inactive environmental law is dusted off after 37 years of languishing on a shelf and regs are written to activate it, a thorough scientific updating would be the first task at hand. Yes. But au contraire, <laughs> instead of data, the DEC puts forth in both the text of the regs and in public statements about the regs, an unsubstantiated assertion. That assertion is that lifting New York's 40-year moratorium on liquefied natural gas facilities is, quote, safe and beneficial for New York. The DEC offers as the source for that claim the so-called 2011 NYSERDA report. That report, 
as we just heard, was ghostwritten by a company deeply involved in LNG production technology. This is shameful. The fundamental rationale for uh, these regulations are, is nothing more than an industry talking point. So what the best available science shows us is that LNG is not safe. It's inherently dangerous, and far from being environmentally beneficial, LNG is a destroyer of climate stability. It contributes to air and water pollution. It undercuts technologies like wind, water, and solar power that are truly beneficial. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Liquefied natural gas is made liquid by cryogenics. LNG is methane that is super cool to minus 259 degrees. And that refrigeration alone requires massive amounts of carbon-based energy. And in addition to stay cold, a tank of LNG must uh, regularly vent methane gas to add evaporative cooling to the refrigeration process. LNG tanks leak methane by design. They have to. And methane, as we know now, but not in 1976, is a potent heat-trapping gas. Manufacturing, storing, and transporting LNG is also a toxic process at every stage and raises serious health and safety risks. And just to mention one, flare stacks are necessary to regasify LNG before it can be combusted, and flare stacks add hazardous air pollution and smog to our air. Absolutely. So tailpipe emissions are, may be lower for LNG, but tailpipes are a small part of the story. LNG simply releases its air pollution prior to combustion. Instead of the highways, it releases into our communities. I was just learning to drive in 1976, and now my 15-year-old will be learning to drive. Before she shares the road with LNG fuel trucks and the tankers servicing them, show me some science. And until then, withdraw the regs. Thank you. Wonderful to see buses still coming in. Uh, and it's wonderful. And yeah, we did pass the van in Albany despite the mayor's veto. We ended up doing a second vote and, and passing it anyway. Yeah. So persistence does pay off. Um, I just want, I'm talking about more about how the regulations, the proposed regulations, are going to affect the municipalities. Uh, they talk in the regulations about training that, that the applicant would have to train firefighters and law enforcement people and and how to deal with a, a problem or an explosion or a leak. Uh, so that they're already admitting there's going to be problems yeah. when, when you read that. Uh, but they don't say how it's going to be paid for. Uh, uh, you know, who, who's paying the city or the municipality where these uh, places are going to be supposedly located to, for, for the time of, of the firefighters and law enforcement and the hazmat teams to, to go for this training. They have to provide the training. There's no mention in here, of course. There's no mention in here of overtime. Was, uh, just last night we were told at the Common Council Finance Committee that our police department is already $380,000 over a $4 million overtime budget for 2013 and we still have two months to go. So who's going to pay for that overtime? Our fire chief in Albany requires every one of our 245 40 firefighters to take the same training. So who's going to pay for 240 firefighters to get trained on what to happen when, if an LNG explosion or leak happens? Uh, there's no mention of that in here. Uh, so, so it's really affecting the municipalities, the, the damage to our roads, none of that is mentioned. Like I said, it's, it's nine pages long. Uh, the first two and a half pages is just about the definitions. Uh, the last page of references, so it's not really nine pages long. It, you know, there's a couple of paragraphs, a couple of sections, uh, which I'll quote in my testimony later today. 
Um, but it needs to, it needs that. I, I just figure the easiest way to do this is, is, is just simple as best. Do away with the regulation, the proposed regulation, keep it simple. Keep the moratorium in the finance since 1970, the 1970s and the terrible explosion. We really have to go into all these details. Who's paying for what? How much liability insurance is needed? We need a, you know, you need a worst case scenario like you saw what happened in, in Canada with, with the train explosion a few months ago. I mean, they're talking at least $120 million to rebuild the downtown. Who's going to pay for that here? Are we going to require these companies to have or to have bonds and, and insurance that's going to cover should Albany, downtown Albany explode, or downtown Poughkeepsie, or any place else? I, I don't, it's not in here. So, again, there's too much that needs to be done. The regulations would probably be a thousand pages if they were really true regulations. So, let's just, like I said, let's keep it simple and let's just ban it. Thank you. Our final speaker is Wes Gillingham, Program Director with Catskill Mountain Keeper. So, I came here this morning for the informational session. The first, one of the first things they pointed out is regulations have nothing to do with hydraulic fracturing and drilling for natural gas. Yeah, right! So you can call an avian embryonic container and say it has nothing to do with a chicken. Right. That's right. <laughs> the point here is that this is part of an onslaught that we're experiencing, and this is why Albany gets an onslaught of activists every time the DEC tries to do something like this, is just push through regulations that do not protect the public. You don't protect the public by using vague, ambiguous terms in a set of regulations. No size limits, no limits on the types of facilities, and no real clear reason as to why we need to go forward with this right now. I'll tell you why they want to go forward with this. Russ already spoke to it. They're talking about building mobile facilities to liquefy natural gas on the site at the well pad. You know what, if we allow these, these facilities in New York under these current regulations across the southern tier in New York, we would have truck after truck after truck coming over the Pennsylvania border delivering natural gas and ruining the communities of Pennsylvania. That would be providing the market for the destruction of northern Pennsylvania. And that's before we get a ban on fracking in New York. It is completely wrong to go forward with a few pages of regulations when we need a comprehensive look at infrastructure of natural gas facilities in totality, not small LNG facilities, but export facilities. We need to have a comprehensive look at the whole industry. You look around the crowd behind me, there's people here. Does it all say nat LNG facility regulations? No, you're looking at signs about stop the Constitution pipeline. New York is against fracking. Keep the frack out of my water. This is an industry onslaught on the state of New York. And when you heard it, when it was reported, oh, this has nothing to do with it, the fractivists are overreacting, this has nothing to do with it, we're not overreacting. What they're dealing with is finally an educated public in the state of New York that will not sit by and let this happen to our state. Going down, fracking. Going down. So, we lost Renee? I'm right here. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Uh, so that's our final speaker for today. We'll take questions from the press, if there are any. No questions. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, my partner David Braun. Uh, we're going to commence with the rally portion of the program. Then we are going to head into the DEC to fill the hearing room for folks who want to make comments. You can sign up to comment when you get into the door. Uh, there'll be a place for you to sign up to speak. Uh, and thank you everyone for coming. This is a great turnout, amazing turnout. 
and we're going to keep winning. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep getting the facts and the science out uh, on this destructive and dangerous industry. So thank you. So good afternoon. My name is David Braun. Yeah. And I'm with uh, New Yorkers Against Fracking, United for Action, and Americans Against Fracking. And I do want to thank the press for being here today, uh, for covering this story. You're currently reporting on a turning point in the course of the history of this planet. One where we could truly destroy our future through climate change, through ripping apart communities with this gas infrastructure, with fracking where we can turn the tide and move to a renewable energy future, where we no longer have to poison ourselves to power our lives. Yeah. We have the technology. The gas industry is using extreme methods to extract this gas, blasting apart bedrock with toxic chemicals, water and sand, in order to extract this energy. They need it because if they don't do it, they go out of business. They know that once we start plugging our solar panels or our cars into our solar panels, that they don't have a job anymore. Imagine if you were a business owner and you found out that the end of your business was coming because something better was here. I would imagine you would put millions of dollars into government, into commercials, into everything possible to try and stop that new industry, that innovation from occurring. Yes. That, my friends, is what we are currently witnessing and that is why we continue to come to Albany that even if our politics and our DEC is being in, are being influenced by oil and gas industry money we are not. Yeah. Right. How many people took the day off work to be here today? Yeah. How many people could be doing something else in their homes? Yeah. Okay, so that's not true for the oil and gas industry. They're paid to be here. Yeah. They're paying for elections. Yeah. They are influencing with everything they can, our public policy. But you know what? Yes. It's our public policy. This is our future for the planet. And we are fighting for the children of tomorrow. <laughs> because if we don't win, they don't come. And we can't let that happen. We must be responsible stewards of this planet and make sure that other generations can come along and enjoy beautiful, enjoyable, loving lives like the ones that we are currently living. So for that, we thank the press for covering the story, for covering the sham regulations, the embarrassing regulations that the DEC has put out based on quote-unquote science, a report that was created by an industry-associated organization. Shameful. We don't want this gas. We don't need your fracking. We want a renewable energy future, and we want it now. Hey. traveled a great distance and been very supportive of the anti-fracking fight and the anti-fossil fuel expansion 
here in New York State and across the country. Uh, she's an Academy Award uh, nominated actress and it's a very much of a pleasure to have her here uh, as a fierce advocate for a better world. Deborah Winger. trying to think of little pithy, you know, sayings because everybody knows everything. Everyone says basically the same thing. These regulations are, they're unbelievable. It's incredible that they've got us, or they have the state in a simplistic frame of mind that says, no, 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 we, we probably won't frack here. Okay, all right, but that's not the end of the story. So I'm, I'm standing over there and I'm thinking, well, we're always trying to think of things that rhyme with something. This, this may not be a hydraulic moment, but it's a diabolic moment. There you go. <laughs> Woo! So I, I, I just am here to say that, you know, when I read day after day these regulations, thanks to Sandra, I read day after day that we're going to have refueling stations that I was just in Texas this last weekend for a happy occasion, but I had to drive a lot and I passed so many trucks and I started to imagine what our roads would be like. And we ha we're going to have refueling stations, whatever size they are. We're going to be, you know, running pipeline like we've never seen and have pumping station, one of which is beginning to be built right near where I live. And all of these things are to enable, enable, other states that have made terrible mistakes. Now, I don't know about you, but I tell my kids, even if you're not doing it, don't enable your friends to do it. <laughs> so we're gonna run all that stuff. I've been told that they're already dumping in our state. So we're gonna be a dumping ground, and, a, and, a, and a, our highways are gonna be open to all the mistakes of other states. And we're going to be asking our citizens to store liquefied natural gas so that we can make more than we need so that we can, as I was a few uh, months ago in Turkey, watching our president shake hands with the country to enable them to take our natural gas. So we're going to be exporting it to places that have banned fracking. I don't know, it's just not making a lot of sense to me. Anyway, diabolic. That's my word for the day. Thank you, Deborah Winger. Uh, I'm now going to bring up Julia Walsh from Frack Action, who's going to tell us about some next steps and things that people can do to help stop these regulations from moving forward. Hey, thanks so much. So I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out here. One of the key things that you can do in your own communities, I know many of you are, stopping the development of infrastructure for fracking. These regulations are there in order to allow for the export of natural gas, frack natural gas, and we know they're setting up pipelines across our great state and people are working day and night to stop them. Just a couple of weeks ago, the, one of the first eastern uh, United States liquefied natural gas export facilities was pre-approved by the Department of Energy in Cove Point, the Chesapeake Bay. Ooh. We know from the industry's own uh, conferences that they are interested in exporting this natural gas overseas to Europe and Asia where they can fetch up to four times the price for natural gas and that will then raise the price in the United States and this will no longer be a, a cheap fuel. So we have to be vigilant. And the important thing that, that everyone did today was coming out, but there's going to be a comment period now through December 4th. The DEC gave us 30 extra days Ooh. to comment. That's great, but it's also a shame because we asked for 180 days. It took them 40 years to release these regulations and 30 days is not enough to comment on them. Yes. We're going to be working across the state, so please stay informed and make sure you're signed up at nyagainstfracking.org. We need folks to be writing letters to the editor, communicating with your other members of your community, and we're going to have actions and events across the state in the weeks to come around the LNG regulations and the need to stop them dead in their tracks. So please stay informed. Please 
please stay involved and thanks for coming. Woo! And again, just to reiterate, the uh, URL that you want to go to to comment on these regulations is 30daysoffrackingregs.com. Again, you can write that out as 30 spelled out or the number 30, but 30daysoffrackingregs.com. There is a guide. There are explanations of what's wrong with the regulations there and helps you to comment, an easy commenting tool. So please check that out. Uh, I want to just make a quick announcement. Uh, we're going to be back here on Wednesday, January 8th for the State of the State. We had about 2,000 people there last year. We're looking to grow that number. So please mark your calendar. It's going to be on at the concourse in the Capitol Complex. January 8th, yes, inside. <laughs> Thank you, Renee.